drive a lot of cars, when you drive a lot of cars, it really makes you appreciate a car like this because everything is so crisp, like a scalpel. I mean, this steering is just spot on. The throttle response is so linear. You know, everything is just so exact, so perfect. You gotta drive, you gotta drive. Welcome to another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. A little uh, automotive royalty here today. Porsche is back with their latest weapon. This is a 2022, not 21, uh, 911, the 992 series GT3. Four liters, over 500 horsepower. I mean, it's, you know, I, I love Porsche because they keep refining it and making it better and better. It, it, it's like a guy that makes knives. They just get sharper and sharper, you know, and, uh, I am not an expert in these cars. I know you Porsche guys go crazy if I get my facts wrong. So I want to bring in a man who knows everything about these cars. Invol uh, he was in the development of the car as well. He's the only American to be a Porsche factory test driver. I think he's been with it for 18 years. Patrick Long. Patrick, come on in, my friend. Jay, good to see you. Thanks for having me on. Now, unlike me, a complete phony, he has the real racing credentials. You started here in Southern County go-karts, right? Yeah. Then you went to Europe. You won the championships there. Papa. Uh, so how did you get hooked up with Porsche as a factory? How does that, I think that's every guy's dream, isn't it? They want to be a factory driver for Porsche. And you must get that all the time. It's yeah. not a bad brand to represent. Uh, for me, it was about being introduced to them while I was chasing my dreams of becoming a professional racing driver at any facet. Um, and I was living in Europe. I had been racing there for six seasons. I was out of money. I was out of time. And Porsche called and said, would you like to come to Weissach and drive a 911? And uh, that, was the, that was the call I needed and the rest is history. Porsche is all about development on the track and transferring it to the street. And that's what we have in the GT3. This is a car that you can daily drive, but it's also a car that you can take to the racetrack and pound it all day long and put up numbers that will challenge any car out there. You know, I remember Phil Hill telling me when he drove for Ferrari, they would pay for gas to and from the race. Oh, okay. They wouldn't pay as expenses like hotel, but we'll give you gas money. It was like horrible. And he, he was world champion. So you're in good company. You're in good company. Yeah, that's my favorite thing about Porsche. You know, whenever I watch these uh, shootouts, you know, with car and driver, road and track, the only ones that get driven hard are Corvette and Porsche. And whenever I meet Porsche owners, they brag about how many miles. This has got 150,000, it's got 80,000. I meet Italian drivers, uh, my car, I've had it 20 years, 800 miles. Hey, good for you, you know. I, I don't quite understand that. And that's what I love, the fact that you can just beat these and uh, they just keep coming on back for more, don't they? Yeah. They do. I mean, I was out at Road Atlanta a few weeks ago giving rides in a car like this and all day long, it never misses a beat. High load corners, old school Road Atlanta, you know that track. Um, the tires on these cars barely are tested because it's all about low CG. It's all about direction change. It's about keeping the car lightweight. But this is naturally aspirated. This is still what we like, a high revving 9,000 RPM engine. It screams, and uh, in the end, when we go out and, and drive a car, it needs to be emotional, right? Right, and there are so few automobiles you can buy nowadays that are normally aspirated and a manual transmission. I think this is the only one at the high end of the market of the exotics, isn't it? I know you can't get a Lamborghini or Ferrari with, uh, with that, even Pagani, none of those guys. So, I mean, I think that's great. And the fact that, and the PDK is faster, wouldn't you say? As a racing driver, you're gonna take the PDK, right? But as a driver driver, you want the manual, I assume. Absolutely. The enthusiast in me wants the manual transmission. Right. The GT3 has been a highly debatable topic about PDK when it was PDK only at the introduction of the previous right. generation. But now we're back to giving you the option as the consumer, and I'm excited about that. But it is hard to argue with double clutch transmissions these days. They're so quick. The oh, next yeah. gear is already pre-selected. So when you hit that gear lifter or you hit that paddle shift, the, the car is just shifting gears yeah. so quickly. I know. It is. It takes some of the fun out of it. but. You're going plenty fast in this thing already. And yep. like you say, it's, was it 503 horsepower? Is that what it is? Yeah. Yep, over 500 horsepower now. Um, again, the real essence of this car though, I think is downforce. Um, we have increased the downforce of this car by 50% in a normal driving mode. You see this swan neck rear style wing. It's very much a racing style downforce and aerodynamics. The suspension, double wishbone suspension up front for the first time. I'm excited about that. They haven't given me many laps in this car, but the few laps I've taken, yeah. I think you're going to like what you feel. You know, it's funny because I, I have this debate with people all the time. And, and here in America, 
horsepower sells everything. Yeah, but this car has 620. You're still going to be faster in this because it's going to handle better. It's going to be lighter, and you will feel the difference. You know, that was all, that's what I love about Gordon Murray, that whole thing. You know, the Colin Chapman add lightness thing. When you take off weight, you add horsepower. And this is the equivalent of probably way more than 500 when you take all those factors in, into play. This will outhandle just about anything. It, I mean, they're, they're, they're pretty amazing cars. Uh, you know what's so funny? I look at it, and I think it looks like the last generation, but it, it looks a little, is it a little bit wider? It is a little wider up front. You also see um, a lot of change up front on the flatter, kind of wider front nose aerodynamics from the front splitter all the way back to the rear. We have a real diffuser back here, so that's very exciting. First time that we're basically taking the cup car kind of track to street transfer and, and bringing a lot of aerodynamics to the rear. We have a 20 up front, a 21 inch wheel in the rear. Uh, we're running carbic ceramic brakes, PCCB, so we're much lighter on the sprung weight, unsprung weight. Now this wing looks like it's manually adjustable. What are those torques in there that loosen that and then you can put this? Yep, variable angle on the rear wing. Uh, we're using a carbon fiber reinforced plastic. The swan neck design where the wing is sort of hung by uh, the mounts. And yes, you can increase downforce by increasing the wing angle. 150 percent more downforce on this car than the last yeah. generation when you're on the track. So it makes a difference when you see Nürburgring lap times, for instance, this car is 17 seconds faster than the previous. So the guys in Vysok are always pushing the envelope. It's not just facelifts. We want to make performance and performance all day. I don't imagine you could feel the downforce difference on the street, could you? No, it's more for up above 100 well, miles an hour. Right. Um, yeah, okay. But yeah, there, there are downforce variables when driving in the lower speeds. But obviously, as the speed increases, the downforce rate does as well. And it's, it, it's a more attractive wing to me, too. It just, I, I don't know whether the fact that it blends in better because of the color, but they're very nicely done. Hey, yeah. when you buy a sports car, you got to like to look at it, right? Well, I love the fact that they take a package and continue refinement. You know, for so many years, manufacturers would come out with a car and then change the whole body design each year just for the sake of change. But, you know, everybody, like Dodge Challenger with the Hellcat, they keep the same body. They just keep improving, improving it, you know. And that's what I like. I mean, look at, I mean, you could barely get a business card through here. It's amazing how low it is. Now, does this have the adjustable suspension where you can lift the front end if there's a speed bump or something like that? Yeah, front axle lift on the front. It'll even ask you if you want it to remember a certain location, and it'll do it for you. So you come home every single day, it'll start to uh, think for you. Okay. The PASM suspension in this car allows you daily driver use, but you can change the mode. Um, the oil-filled suspension will give you a track performance mode and a daily driver mode where it's a little bit more compliant. Your coffee's a little more stable in the hand. I like the wheel. At first, I thought the blue line was on the tire, but it's on the wheel, isn't it? Yeah, we offer a couple of trims to the wheel to match to the different body colors. Um, this shark blue was the launch car. This car actually came in from Germany. This is the first one in the country, and I think the uh, first time we're covering on screen, so it's pretty cool to be in the presence of this car. Yeah, it's very exciting. I mean, those brakes are massive. Jeez, how many, how many uh, uh, piston calipers are those in the front? So oh, this that's... is a six piston front caliper. Um, as you can see, the wheel size is all about allowing them as much brake as we can get on the front. We're running a 20, one inch rear wheel and a 20 inch front wheel. We've got a wider tire looking for more contact patch and more grip. Ultimately want to put down some serious times at the Nürburgring. We've got to, got to add more footprint. Does this have rear wheel steering? So rear steer below 31 miles an hour, it's actually helping you to turn around. It's increasing your ability to uh, make a tight turn. And above 49, it's working with you. The rear is turning at the same direction as the front to give better turn in, quicker direction change and that agility that you want up in the canyons. How many changes do you think there are in this one compared to the previous generation? Any I know idea? Andy and his team in Vysok, there's not a single part of this car that they haven't touched. It's form follows function, continuing to push that envelope. He is such a competitor lead of the GT cars that every single time I've sat in a car, I know that there's not a single part that he hasn't thought about and, and tweaked, even if it's a carryover they might have laid it in a little differently. Yeah, no, it's amazing. You know, Porsche is an amazing company. I was just reading about them and the synthetic fuel that they're developing. And it's funny, you know, if it was Exxon or Shell or somebody doing synthetic fuel, I would just go, well, that's what they do. I don't really care. But because it was Porsche, I read the article because I know 
it'll be gas that helps the enthusiasts. It's not just for diesel trucks and a replacement. You know, so I know it could probably, well, like I said, they've kept this 911 for 50 years going strong. So it'll keep the internal combustion running a lot longer. If they can develop a fuel that actually does pollute as little as an electric car, well, that would be a huge game changer, wouldn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. It's been over a decade in motorsport that we've been talking about efficiency, alternative uh, ways of making power, regeneration, creating electric charge through deceleration, like in the hybrid that we've talked about previously on your show. I think it is all about being an engineering company and pushing the evolution of being more efficient and looking at the future of motoring but also remembering where our roots are and creating something as tactical and uh, just emotional as a car like a GT3. Let's talk about the engine now. Obviously six cylinder, four liter, four valve. What, what, what changes have they made from the last generation engine wise? Biggest thing that stands out to me is the independent throttle bodies. Okay. Just making everything a little crisper, a little tighter. One of the things about this engine is just how they deliver oil at such a high RPM. The sustained RPM that we run on these cars the, the abuse that they take, but I can tell you as a driver, I absolutely thrash these engines and they just keep asking for more. Now, a lot of cars have more than one oil pump just for that reason. How many does this have, do you know? Seven scavenge pumps, they <laughs> tell me. Seven pumps. Well, that, you know, it's so funny. I've got a very early 67 Lamborghini Miura. And when you throw it into a, a, a right-hander, the oil pressure goes to zero because all the oil rushes to the other side. And since it shares, shares the oil with the transmission, all the oil, so the pump literally goes I mean, you're literally starving it. So that's why I always say it's a fun car to drive swiftly, but not a fun car to drive fast because, you know, any kind of G-force is immediately going to, I mean, it's, it's so, they didn't think to put baffles in it for whatever reason, but obviously it shows you what technology can do. It shows seven pumps, so obviously you're getting oil at a constant rate, no matter what, whether the thing is upside down or not. Yeah, and this engine is essentially what we're delivering on the GT3 Cup. We produce over 100 GT3 Cups every year to race in the one make categories. So we know this engine performs on the track. We put it into a street car, we refine it. We don't detune it much. I mean, the horsepower numbers are like right in the same percentage. So it's exciting to know that the cars that I started my career in at Porsche are really what's developing the evolution of these GT3 cars. Yeah, and it's amazing that they're still able to meet emission requirements and because, you know, we really live in the golden era of the internal combustion engine. Everybody thinks, oh, the muscle car era. Well, those are terrible cars. I mean, they, they, they polluted and they really weren't that powerful the size of the motors. I mean, we're at the point now we have, you know, four liters does what eight liters used to do and, and vice versa. I'm mean, not vice versa. And two liters are like four liters. I mean, they get 500 horsepower from two liters now. I mean, it's amazing to me how efficient engineering has become. And of course, there's really no sense in opening this because you, you can't see the engine anymore, can you? We need to access it from underneath. So yeah, you go, I, go next door, get it on your lift. Yeah, I, that's, I sort of miss that part where there was all the woo, ah factor. You know, of, of just seeing it. You know, I've got my 63 Carrera over there, uh, which I love. And you kind of, oh, there's the carburetors, there's everything, you know. So everything is sort of hidden away now. But, I mean, it's amazing how there's no bright work on cars at all anymore. Uh, I mean, no, not door handles, not anywhere. But I, I don't miss it. Yeah, the trim on this car, dark on the window accents. Um, you know, one of the things we talk about is, is how vibrant and exciting the color options are on these cars. Um, you see lots of different sample colors in, in the GT3, and I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised at your options and, and what you can uh, talk to your local dealer about specking out. We have three different seat options. This is a carbon fiber fixed back seat, lightest weight, most track uh, enthusiastic as, as far as a design, but we have a four-way, which is standard, and an 18-way if you're really looking for comfort and lots of adjustability, right. kind of giving up a little bit of weight for more comfort. Well, see, I gained a lot of weight for more comfort, so I'm, I'm <laughs> sort of the exact opposite. Uh, yeah, they're wonderful. It's just amazing that you, I mean, you, you can't come anywhere near the limits of this car in the street, and if you tried, you'd be in prison. See that you still get an analog center RPM gauge and then digital on each side. There's a track mode on the steering wheel where you can adjust to what you want to see while you're in race mode versus on the way to the office. You don't really need to know what your uh, water temperature is. I love the fact that people really, really use these. 
I, I rarely see a Porsche as a get trailered to a show and then off the trailer and everybody oohs and ahs, and then it goes back on the trailer. They all get driven. That's what's that's what's fun. That's what's great. I love being in Germany and seeing a guy who's got a roof rack with his slicks mounted on his GT3 driving down the highway, gets the track, pulls the rack off, puts his slicks on, blasts yeah. a couple laps at the Nürburgring, back to the office. And imagine you can still drive this at close to 200 miles an hour on the Autobahn, can't you? When you're yeah, top, uh, top track speed is just shy. I think it's 198. Yeah. That is efficiency back to downforce, uh, making efficient downforce where we're making grip, but keeping that coefficient of drag low right. for that top speed. And what is the coefficient of drag on this? 0.34, we're proud to keep that number low so that we have top speed at the Nürburgring, but also the grip in the corners when we when we need to have that and we, downforce. And we should explain, to you, if you took off the downforce, the wing, and the, you'd probably be in the high twos. Downforce is what keeps you on the road. I mean, there, there was a guy that developed a car. It would look like Gordon Murray's rocket a few, uh, about 10 years ago. I can't remember what it was. And the downforce was incredible, but anything under 100 miles an hour, it literally just fell off the road because you had to be going so fast to use it, you know. Whereas this is obviously a nice compromise. So it's, it, it's a road car with, with race equipment, basically, isn't it? Yeah. When this goes to Le Mans, can they adjust the down? Like on the straights, obviously, you want more speed. Is it, is it adjustable from the car on the race car? No, not the aerodynamics. Right. I mean, when we go to the racetrack, for instance, and we talk about how much wing angle we're going to run, we pre-decide what that wing angle is. Obviously, a less, lesser wing angle, we're going to get better top speeds. And at Le Mans, that's worth a lot on the lap time. But you get to the Porsche curves, and you don't have a lot of wing angle in it, don't, not making a lot of downforce. And it's a handful for the driver. So that's always the trade-off. Uh, with this wing, we have a track setting, which right. is the optimal downforce. Makes 150% more downforce than the last generation car. So although the wing looks a lot cooler, it actually performs a lot more as well. Is it illegal at Le Mans to have adjustable aerodynamics from the car? At least in the GT categories, yeah. you cannot have a variable adjustable downforce. I would love to have that. You saw in Formula One, I think it was the beginning of last year, they had where you could kind of change the steering uh, to decrease the drag from the toe and things like that that are on the fly. We don't have a lot in GT racing, no adjustable sway bars or anything like that. But this car has a lot of adjustability um, for a street car to be able to have variable toe, variable anti-roll bars, things like that. That's very racing natured. It's exciting that you could go to the track uh, and tune this car for exactly what you're looking for on track and, and then give it back to more of a daily driver setting when you leave. So you see why I brought an expert in. I, I don't know what I'm talking about. I, see, this is why I brought him here, because he can tell you exactly. Because I, whenever I do, Leno, you don't know what you're talking about. All right, all right, let me bring an expert in. So that's why I'm glad Patrick is here. It's really great. It's really, I mean, that's pretty cool to be the only American. It's a great honor. I mean, Porsche has such a great past and story with America, especially Southern California, sure. where I grew up. Um, to fly the flag for this company, you meet people all across the world that have a personal story, third generation Porsche family. Um, and, and that real connection of the love, I collect classic Porsches myself. And um, I see your 4Cam over there, your Sepia long hood. I love that T. It's uh, amazing to just kind of live through the heritage of this company by driving the cars. Rather than learning about them in a book, I have a tremendous opportunity to jump in and drive a lot of these cars. And Porsche keeps a massive archive at their museum in Stuttgart and lets us take these race car and street cars out to different events and share them, like you said, Porsche is all about driving these cars, experiencing these cars. They don't tuck their own archive away and they expect that you're gonna drive this GT3 car as hard as you want. Well, that's what I love about my 356 twin cam is the fact that you can use all the power all the time. You just keep your foot to the floor, it goes to seven grand, which is about 110, 120, and you just keep it there. And it, the engine just sings. I mean, and I enjoy, you know, I find so many modern cars are so fast I didn't get a chance to enjoy the tack. I love the watching it swing and then make, and now it's me, me, hey, I'm in jail. Hey, what happened? No, I didn't mean to go 150. You know, they're so quick. So that's why I like the vintage stuff. And my 911 over there, my sepia one, my 71, it's a 911T and we put a twin plug head, took it to 2.5 liters, just gave it a little more power. It's like 2,400 pounds. It is so light. It's amazing how light it is. And, and it's just a great car to drive, but you can feel the heritage from that to this, you know, which is which, which is what I like. Yeah, I mean, I if like. you looked at your 356 
uh, four cam engine, race inspired engine, high RPMs, high revving, and you go all the way to modern day, the same idea still exists. Naturally aspirated, high revving, built for the mountains, built for the track. Um, the Austrian mountains where they started designing Porsches was all about agility, efficiency, being quick in the corners. It wasn't about heavy weight, big horsepower numbers and laying big black lines. It's I'm going to beat you in the corners in the tight twisties. I'm going to have more tire and more brake at the end of the race. And that still exists when you compare this car to what else is out there on offer from other manufacturers. And that's with rear wheel drive. Yes, right. two wheel drive. And uh, this car is as analog as, as they'll let us be in this day and age. Yeah, yeah, which is what I love, which, is, which really makes it fun to drive. Well, I'm going to take it for a spin here. It's because we have our COVID protocols still in effect. We can't ride in the same car, so I'll have to go by myself. Gee, I feel terrible about that. But this <laughs> way, I won't embarrass myself with Patrick going, hey, you screwed up. See, nobody will know. So very good. I'm going to take it for a spin here. and. Uh, and see how she goes. Patrick, thank you very much, man. That's, thank you for the tutorial there. It, it, it was just great, and you covered a lot of facts that I knew nothing about, and I learned a lot just from listening to you right now. So let's take a spin and see how she goes. Have fun. Yeah. I thought this was a manual transmission car, so I'm gonna go, where's the clutch? Oh, oh no, it's, it's got the PDK, which is fine. It's amazing how quickly this shifts. You can sh shift it sequentially here or use the paddles. I'm so used to the paddles, I'll probably use those. Uh, what do we got here? Seven speeds, which is pretty amazing. I love that the tack is right in front of the driver. Love the steering wheel. Just the right size, not too big, not too small. This is a German spec car, so everything is in German. Kind of funny. It is a funny, it just feels like a smarter, better, faster, quicker version of my 71911T, which is good that the heritage is still there. I mean, it feels very Porsche-like, just more concise, more crisp. Uh, uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. I hate, I hate when I get into a new vehicle, I'm just overwhelmed by all the goofball electronics. This is pretty straightforward. You know, it's funny, you hit the, the roads in LA are so terrible. And you hit these huge bumps and you, you get a jolt, but you don't get a, you know, a, a shake through the car. You know, a lot of cars, you hit a bump like that and you just feel it on the front wheel and you just feel it just go down the chassis. It's just like a ripple effect, you know, like a wave. But this doesn't. Even even in my driveway there, at the garage, it's a bit off kilter. So you'll notice you get one wheel off the ground with this thing. Everybody else would just flex and fill it, but you get you get one wheel up and it's fine. And it's 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 amazing how stiff it is. It's like every year they just refine it just a little bit more, just a little bit more. If you ever get a chance to drive with a real racer like Patrick Long, uh, you got to give it a shot. I mean, these guys can make this car do things you, you couldn't hardly imagine. I mean, it's just unbelievable how good they are. And, you know, this is, you know, it's like me dating an aerobics instructor. You know, I'm out of breath. Uh, uh, she's gone. Are we going to go again? No, give me 10 minutes. Hey, hey. You know, it's a shame. There's a whole generation of uh, young drivers who'll never know what a uh, normally aspirated engine feels like, how quick the throttle response is. It's just right now, you know. I mean, turbos are real good now, and so and superchargers are pretty good. But just hearing the induction noise, feeling it, it's it's really, really nice.
looking at a nine grand red line. The red line starts at 9,000 RPM. That's pretty amazing. Sight lines are fantastic. You can see out of every window, gives a clear view. Even the wing in the back, it's not that intrusive. I mean, it's like having a blue line down the center of your windshield. There's really nowhere around here I can get this car to do what it's supposed to do. But I can hit that and I can feel it. <laughs> When I, I, I'm so spoiled by these dual clutch transmission now because they shift bow, 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 just like that. Just you hardly drop any RPM at all. They just shift right now, you know. And then you get in an old style where you go, it's uh, horrible. You know, the great thing about this car is you don't have to have your foot in it all the time to enjoy the precision involved in driving this thing. There's some great roads here in California. You know, once you get off the main roads, you get up into the hills. Uh, you know, up uh, like Los Angeles Forest, up in that. Oh, it's fantastic. Come on, let's try and find some wine you want to show you what I'm talking about. You know, this feels like a turban. It's amazing to me how well balanced this engine is. So funny, I'm old enough to remember the old days when you got this kind of power, you couldn't get air conditioning and power steering and power brake and all the other things that go with it, you know. See, the, the throttle does exactly what you want it to. There's no hesitation. Even with the best of turbos, the lag is so infinitesimal, you can't hardly feel it, but it's still lag. You, you just, it just, just, just takes it up that one crispness level. It, it's crisper, that's the word I want to If you've never driven a Porsche or been in a Porsche, find somebody who has one and have them take you out on your birthday, just, just to get the sensation. It, it's, I mean, it's, it's pretty amazing. In fact, now that I think of it, Porsche has a drive program where you can rent just about any car. I don't know if you can rent this one, but uh, one of these, but just about anything else. Just, just, you need to experience it at least once if you're a car enthusiast, you really do. You know, even when you hit bumps, they're firm, but they're not jarring. It doesn't, you gotta drive, you gotta drive. This is just the road this car was made for. Fast two lane road. You know, I don't know how you get something much better than this. <laughs> there are very few people that can make this car do what it's capable of, and I, 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 I'm not one of them. But I can certainly appreciate it and enjoy it. You know, you know, I'm not a gun guy, but uh, I appreciate a well made weapon. I like the way it sits in the weapon. I like the way it cocks. I like the way you know. I like the way it feels in your hand. And that's what this car is. It's really a weapon. It's a track weapon. It just bludgeon the guy in the other cars, which you're more than able to do. And boy, it just feels so good. I mean, this makes an average driver a great driver, a great driver, a, an excellent driver, and a poor driver a good driver because it just just does everything so well. It just feels so so solid. It's the kind of car you can have fun with at quasi-legal speed, you know? You know, I always say all the fun is between 40 and 120. 
that's when most of it happens. Anything above that, eh, now you're going to jail or you're being really crazy crazy. This is the kind of car that can handle anything in that range. But you catch up with them right away. Look at that. This is where this car lives and hunts on these kind of roads. I mean, highways are nice, but this is fantastic. There are so many roads like this in California where you see no traffic. You know, you're not right in L.A. You're on the outskirts. When you go up and over the hills, it's only for people who live on the other side of the hill, and they're the only ones who use these roads. So that's why the road is wide open. And they're reasonably well maintained because they're not beaten up. You know, the fun thing about Porsche is every time they combine with a new car, it's always better than the last one. It's not, like, way better, just improvement, just whatever was slightly wrong with the other one, they corrected it. I know this is supposed to be like the raw version, but it, I mean, it's extremely comfortable, extremely tight, it's got air conditioner, got a heater, got a radio, that's all I need, you know? I mean, it, no bling in it, no nonsense. I mean, everything you believe and think about German engineering is in this car. Even lightweight glass. I think this car weighs about 3,100 pounds, which is pretty amazing these days. You know, cars have to have so much safety equipment, steel door guard beams in here and all that kind of stuff, airbags everywhere. I mean, you can't even, it doesn't look like an airbag car, but they're hitting all over this car. So it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing they can keep the weight that low. I want to thank Patrick Long for taking time out to do this uh, tutorial with us. We really appreciate it. Just one of the great drivers, very unassuming guy, but He's the guy you want to be. He's the guy we all want to be. He's got the job of a lifetime. And thank Porsche for letting me buy. I mean, this is just an amazing automobile. It's, it's, uh, it's so much better than I am. But I like it because, like my F1 McLaren, it's a car that I could never really reach its limits. And I'm just not good enough to do it. But that's what keep it, keeps it interesting. You keep trying. So, Patrick, Porsche, thank you very much, you guys. And, uh, We'll see you next week.